right, so in this lecture we're going to talk a little bit about the Imperial Unit System or the U.S. Customary System in Finite Elements. And let me start off just saying if you can avoid using this system, you should do so at all costs. Sometimes you can't avoid using it, but if you can, use newtons and millimeters or newtons and meters and you're going to be far better off, particularly when it comes to anything involving heat transfer. And I can tell you that by my own personal experience. All right, so our typical U.S. customary system would involve pounds and feet. And to make it like the other video, we can also include seconds. There's a second customary system that we would use that would involve inches, pounds, inches, and seconds. If the, you're in the United States, you may be used to pounds per square inch for a unit of stress. <clears throat> and that's a perfectly fine unit of stress. If you're in Europe, you're probably using Pascals. So you probably wouldn't be interested in, in this discussion whatsoever. So if we go back and think about our previous lecture where I said, imagine we had a round bar and we put a force on it and our force had units of pounds and our length dimension was feet, okay, now all of a sudden our area unit is feet squared. And so our stress unit would be pounds per square feet. Now pounds per square feet for a stress unit, if you're designing a, a dam or something, that might be a perfectly fine stress unit. Most people that work in material strengths mechanical design in the US would be more familiar with pounds per square inch. And so likewise then if we design our round bar and we have units of pounds and a length of inches, our area unit would be inches squared. And so now our stress unit would be pounds per square inch. Just as we saw the choice of our length unit kind of imposed something on our mass unit in the Newton millimeter in second and Newton meter in second system, the same sort of thing happens in this U.S. customary system. Let's make a little room. So we'll set this up kind of the same way as what we did previously. We have our pound, feet, and second system, and we're going to use F is equal to MA. So we have pounds equal to some mass unit times acceleration. And now we're going to be stuck using our acceleration in feet per second squared. Now, there's a lot of confusion between mass units and force units. If you go stand on a scale in Europe, you'll probably be told your mass, which is in kilograms. But the unit of force is newtons, and your weight is a force. So you get massed in Europe, but you get weighed in the United States as a force. So if you step on a scale in the United States, the force your body exerts onto the scale is what is measured. And that would usually be measured in pounds. So we have this, first of all, this kind of a weird thing between the two unit systems where we're very familiar with kilograms and maybe not so familiar with Newtons. And one system, the ordinary citizen isn't very familiar with Newtons. And in the other system, the ordinary citizen is very familiar with pounds, but they're not very familiar with the mass unit. And in fact, unless you've had a class in classical dynamics, and hopefully you've had, if, if, if you've had this, uh, if you're in this class right now, the mass unit is very unusual, it has a special name called a slug. kind of a funny name. 
I don't always go to the grocery store and buy a slug of bananas. But you could. That would be the mass unit. Nobody really knows what you're talking about. People are very unfamiliar with this uh, ordinarily uh, in the U.S. that the mass unit is a slug. Now, I should, should say at this point, some people will say, well, what about this thing called a pound mass? Pound mass is something that you should completely avoid in finite element analysis. It will cause you nothing but pain and suffering as you try to work out what a pound mass means. Um, heat transfer people are very um, attuned to using this term called pound mass. Don't listen to them. We need to use slugs. Okay, we'll talk about a pound mass later. All right, so what about the pound inches second system? So here we have the same force unit of pounds, and here we have a mass unit. And our acceleration then, because we're using F is equal to ma, our acceleration now is expressed in inches per second squared. Now what do we call this mass unit here? Well, there's a couple of names um, which you have probably also never heard of. Some people may call this a blob. Okay, what does that mean? I don't know, it's a blob. Some people may call it the slinch. Uh, but what we're going to use in our class is what the Endurosim unit table uses. It's called a snail. Okay, and again, that's kind of a funny word. A slug, of course, is a creature that goes across the ground. A little slimy little animal. And a snail is usually pretty small, maybe smaller than a slug. And it has a shell, and it goes across the ground. So it's kind of a, a play on words with the word slug. So we'll just go ahead and use snail. So in our pound feet and second system, our units of mass is going to be called a slug. In our pound inches and second system, the unit of mass is going to be a snail. We didn't talk about gravity in the Newton millimeter and second system. Uh, gravity in the Newton meter and second system is 9.81 meters per second squared. In the millimeter system, it would be 9,100 millimeters per second squared. Well, a slug, well, a, a gravity, well, excuse me, one g has a certain value for slug. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up our Endurasim table because it's done all the work for us, and that'll keep me from making mistakes. So one slug is one slug of mass, but it's also 8.33 times 10 to the minus 2 snails. And in fact, this table has what a g is, 9.81 meters per second squared, uh, 9,810, I think I said that wrong a second ago, 9,810 millimeters per second squared, 32.2 feet per second squared, or 386.2 inches per second squared. Make sure I get the right number. 386.2 inches per second squared and 32.2 feet per second squared. Or if we want to call it 32.19, we can. Okay, so that's the conversion that we have. What does that mean if we have a dynamics problem and we're using pounds and feet? 
our mass unit needs to be in slugs per cubic feet. And I almost dare you to find anybody that has a mass density written as slugs per cubic feet. You're probably never going to find it, but that's what we need to use in our finite element code in the box where it says what is your density for using the pound, feet, and second system. you got to put in slugs per cubic feet. If we're using the pound and inches system, then our mass unit has to be the snail. The density unit is going to have to be the snail per cubic inch. So that's where things start to get weird. Where they get unbearably weird is when you talk about heat transfer units. So let me write down a couple popular heat transfer units. All right, so one property you may put in for a material in a thermal type analysis is the specific heat of the material. So it's something to do with, it's the ratio of the heat that's required to raise a certain mass of body by one degree Fahrenheit in this case to the mass of an uh, to the, the heat of a similar sized mass similar amount of mass of water by one degree Fahrenheit in this case case and a typical unit for specific heat is a BTU per pound mass degree Fahrenheit. Now what is this thing called pound mass? Um, let me just say it's a unit that should be avoided. It's a way to not have to use slugs and snails but all of a sudden now we have this new unit called pound mass. Now, what that does is it kind of messes up all the other conversion factors that we've got. There's a way to get around it, but you do not want to use, well, let's just say if you use your um, mass unit as pound mass, your length units are going to be kind of screwed up. Now, a BTU is a British thermal unit, which is a measure of uh, uh, energy. All right, again, this is where we have to be really careful. So I found a web page that has thermal properties of materials, and I think it's a great web page, and it has things in here. Um, look, it says the specific heat of aluminum is 0.24 BTU per pound per F. Now, what they don't really say in there is they're really talking about a pound mass which is something that heat transfer people are probably very familiar with. A lot of this heat transfer stuff dates back to the 1800s when people were looking at steam and uh, steam engines and things like that. And, and they were very much interested in their own kind of specific unit sets. And they knew what they were talking about. But in the wider community, this pound mass is, like I said, just something you should just avoid. Now, fortunately, again, this is where the Endurasim units table comes in. So we go in here and we see that, um, let's see, specific heat. Uh, here it is down here. One BTU per pound mass degree Fahrenheit can be converted into the Newton meter second system in this fashion. The Newton millimeter second system in this fashion. Now this is per degree Kelvin instead of degree Fahrenheit. So there's a lot of conversion factors going on in there. Here it is in the inch system where we're using the snail. And here it is in the feet system where we're using slug. Once uh, our class has verified all the entries in this table, each student has a different line so it shouldn't be too much work. 
then we're going to be very confident that we can use this table and, uh, and be okay with it. I'm going to leave you with this final thought. It's best just not to use any kind of heat transfer analysis on customary units. Basically what I'm saying then is use Newton meter seconds or Newton millimeter seconds. You can survive in those systems with the conversion factors. It just gets really tough when you start talking about British thermal units and pound masses and degrees Fahrenheit when a lot of your material properties are going to be expressed in things like watts, uh, kilograms, and degrees Kelvin or per degree uh, delta degree in Celsius. All right, well, I think that's enough for this one. Um, and and uh, if you do use US, U.S. customary units, it is quite possible to be successful with it, but uh, uh, it can be very frustrating.